Samantha Cook and I work as an application engineer in the wire and cable department here at Annexter. Today I'll be talking about conduits, in particular how to calculate a conduit fill. So today we have with us two different cables. We have a VFD and a trade cable. We are also going to assume we have a type 2 EMT conduit. And what we're going to do is try to see if these two cables can fit in that conduit. So there's three different things we need to take into account when calculating a conduit fill. One, the number of conductors that are being installed. Two, the total cross-sectional area of the conductors. And three, the NEC 2011 standards. Now, the most imp important variable when selecting your conduit is the number of conductors being installed. We need not only take into account how many conductors we're installing now, but allow for some wiggle room to install some later. Looking at the diagram shown here, we have an image of conductors slash cables lying in a conduit in sets of 1, 2, 3, and 4. NEC 2011, Chapter 9, Table 1, shows that the maximum conduit allowance. As you can see, two conductors has the smallest maximum fill. Looking back at the diagram, this is due to the two conductors, or cables, forming an oval rather than a circle. According to the NEC Chapter 9, Note 9, a multi-conductor or flexible cord containing two or more conductors shall be treated as one solid conductor for the calculation of conduit fill. So looking at our VFD, we notice that we actually have one, two, three, four. Four conductors. However, the system is treated as a whole as one conductor. This is the same for our, our tray cable. Therefore, we have two conductors total for this calculation. Moving on, we need to now calculate the total cross-sectional area. This is done by using the equation area equals pi times diameter squared over 4, or area equals 0.79 diameter squared. The VFD has an outer diameter of 0.65 inches, and the tray table has a diameter of 0.44 inches. Inserting this into the equation, we find that the tray cable has a total cross-sectional area of 0.15 and that the VFD has a cross, total cross-sectional area of 0.33. Adding these two together, we find that the total cross-sectional area is 0.48. Now we move on to our NEC standards. Looking in the NEC 2011, Chapter 9, Table 4, we see that there's various different conduits and conduits allowances. You have to select your conduit material, which is in our case, EMT. Looking at the EMT table, we look at our trade size, which is 2. Then we look at our maximum fill allowance, which is 31%, for using two conductors. As you can see, the NEC requires a 1.04. Now, our number that we calculated was 0.48, which is less than the 1.04. Therefore, it's appropriate for this application. However, if your number is larger than the NEC 2011, you have to select a different material or size of your conduit. When calculating conduit fill, not all cables being installed are completely circular. Sometimes they're more elliptical. When this is the case, you should use the eclipse as the outer diameter and then use the equation that we calculated before. So thank you very much for tuning in, for learning how to calculate conduit fill, and I hope that you enjoyed your time. See you next time.